the anchor of CNN's Cuomo Prime Time and host of Sirius XM's Let's Get After It, Chris Cuomo. There he is. How are you? Good to see you, Chris Cuomo. There was a time when you brought on an anchorman and they would not get a uh, standing ovation. <laughs> Anchormen are kind of having a moment. Did you read that story? They're big popular on, on, on talk shows and stuff. Uh, yeah, because... my therapist has been talking to me about it a lot recently. <laughs> you have a therapist? I was here with Howard Stern. Like, I have a whole team. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Am I the only one left in the control group? Okay. <laughs> But, um, you know, CNN, which is where you're at. Yes. I mean, you started at Fox. I didn't know that. I was reading about it. I didn't, what was that like? Did Roger Ailes ever grab your ass? <laughs> uh, no, but apparently I was one of the only ones uh, that he did. But, uh, but did I did start there. It was my first job. You fit in with the... Uh, they must have known your pedigree. No, I left, I left for a reason. Uh, you know, <laughs> the funny thing is, Roger was one of the only people who would hire me. Um, because he took a chance on whether or not I would be able to be fair. You know, at the time, you couldn't come from a political family and have any hope in journalism, uh, that you'd have to be an analyst, you know, or go into politics itself. And I didn't want to do that. So he gave me an opportunity uh, to try out lots of different parts of reporting. He really knew a lot about interviewing in particular. Uh, but the idea of telling a story. But eventually I had to leave because I couldn't tell stories the way he wanted Already there are people mad at you because you said some nice things sort of about Roger Ailes. And this is something you and I both face we, because we platform people, Chris. In other words, we give people who we don't agree with a chance to speak. And there's a lot of liberals who hate that because you should only talk amongst the people who already agree with you. I mean, they hate you because you are friends with Kellyanne Conway and have her on. I wish that were the only thing. I feel like I'm so surprised when anyone is nice to me at any time, you know, including my kids, because everybody's got an opinion um, now. They used well, to just not watch. Now I wish they didn't watch. Well, it's interesting, because CNN used to be the neutral station. I mean, there was MSNBC on the left, mm -hmm. and you had Fox News on the right. I mean, we all knew that. Sometimes I would watch Fox News just to see what they're saying. I couldn't take too much of it. I knew what MSNBC was, but CNN was like, OK, these guys are trying to play it right down the middle. Now you're getting sued by the president. How do you play it down the middle, I guess, is the question, when the president is so far to one side? Well, look, I, look, I think what has changed is the president and how he has decided to conduct uh, his office. Uh, there is nothing new, there's nothing non-neutral about facts. You know, if you want to talk about what's going on and test arguments, that is what it is. It's not left or right. Either you're telling the truth or you're not. Either your argument makes sense or it doesn't. Uh, I think what has changed is how this president is. What we never had before was someone who would say, no, I, it's not that I disagree with you. It's that you're a bad person, Bill, for asking me that question. You're bad. Scum. They shouldn't like you. Called you and it's fake. Scum. What you said about me is fake. Scum. He, he said, said that about his own people. I know. He said that about people in his human own party. He didn't say it about scum. me. He said much worse. Human scum. But wow. Yeah. That's... And then the press secretary, this is what's new. So usually the press secretary comes in and says, no, you heard scum, I heard thumb, which means they're just one part of the hand. Now she comes in and says, yeah, that's how it is. If right. you've been against this president, that's how we should speak about you. That's the biggest problem I think we all well, face. Well, and also, I mean, CNN... Uh, the trust factor in CNN has gone way down from something like 64% 20 years ago to like 48%. What is that about? you saying it's just me? No. I've done that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... I was nervous about this. But, now I know why. Um, here's what I think has happened. If we are honest with ourselves, people have been skeptical about institutions and the media for a long time. Uh, you can get a sense of bias in the media, that it's only telling you certain stories a certain way. And I think very often that criticism is well-founded. Um, however, I will tell you this. This president is playing on every weakness in our social fabric. I believe the book that will be written about him that will be most uh, dispositive of what he meant is the luckiest man in the history of the game because he lies a lot 
and people suspect that they all lie. He, uh, you know, says that he's going to do something, but it doesn't happen that way. They believe it's the industry standard in politics. Uh, he does things with Ukraine. They believe, well, it must happen all the time. He says the media is fake. People have been suspicious of that. So he's playing to people's prejudices as a demagogue does. But I'll tell you this, Bill. I've never had so many people say, I support what you're doing, as is happening right now. But you get a lot of hate, as you said. I do. And those are only my four cousins that clapped. Right. I mean, uh, you know, you real hate too, by the way. Not I don't like what you said. Right. Come to your house, find your kids on social media, right. talk to your kids in a restaurant, no, I nine know. You... years old, and say things that you should only say man to man. That's new for me. Yeah. No, I know you had that, that dust up when you uh, with the Fredo thing. Oh, you heard. I heard about that, and you know, I feel bad for you all that. I mean, look. Believe me, I get some of this, too, but I don't have a family, so I don't have to worry about kids, thank Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be horrible. I can't, I can't imagine what that's like. But, but the Fredo thing, I just got it. What bothered me about that is that liberals have this reputation for making everything identity politics. And Fredo, I'm sorry, it's just not a thing. It's just not a slur. It's not an Italian slur. It means dumb brother, which you're not. But you have a brother who's the governor of New York. That's where that came from. I'd like to see you call him that. <laughs> see how that goes. I'm not um, going to no, call anybody where, that. Where it came from is, I, I've dealt with this. But it's not about ethnic, ethnicity. I think the context matters. That it, is not my experience. No. They okay. talk about, they call me Italian names. Yes. Ever since he came into right. office, they started identifying me by ethnicity. Mobs to this, godfather yes, that's, that. That's I that. see it as an extension and of that. Your father had it when he was the governor of New York. There was, there was, that was one of the scuttlebutt things they would say about him, like, oh, Mario Cuomo, he's, he's somehow in with the mob because he's Italian. That's a slur on the Italians. Fredo just means dumb brother. Okay, we can agree to disagree. Well, I'll tell you but, what's interesting about, I guess this is social progress, that you can now have an opinion about what an Italian can find offensive, you know? <laughs> I didn't say you couldn't find it. You can... You... Look. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Usually when we shake hands, you're gone. Um, I'm just a fan. I, uh, well, thank you. I mean, of course... Well, it's interesting because a lot of times people, white men are not allowed to have an opinion about anything. It, you know, political correctness uh, has a great set of goals, and how we get there has been very uneven. Uh, and I think it's a concern yeah. for us as a society because now you have a president that once again is playing to people's questions about political correctness and not in the way that you do with this razor sharp scalpel on when it makes sense and when it doesn't, which is part of your genius. Uh, and that's... Finish your thought, Chris. <laughs> Listen, Let the man speak. I would not, I, I would not have missed the <laughs> show you. and phone all the way out here if I didn't I think that you were the best that. at what you do. Thank you. Um, but that's not what he does. No. What he does is his plays on all the prejudices that make political correctness necessary. And, you know, we have to be careful that you don't wind up punishing the people that you need to help uh, protect your cause. And I think we're still finding well, our okay. way. So I, I watched you on the LGBTQ town hall yes. CNN had. This, to me, says a lot about the Democrats. Here are the Democrats doing a town hall just for the LGBT community. Yes. Liberal people supporting this liberal principle, and they were interrupted by protesters who, I guess, thought they weren't going far enough. Beto uh, and Pete, who I believe has some credentials in the LGBT community, <laughs> were both interrupted by people screaming, you know, Trans lives matter. No one was disputing this. What did it, you make of that? Here's, what I, here's what I made of it, because I was there. Uh, I got to see it. First of all, what I loved seeing was not just the candidates, because they know they're being measured for how they deal with situations like that. But I thought that Anderson and Don Lemon, it happened uh, for Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon in both their segments. I love that they respected the protest because the transgender community specifically feels so targeted. I got where they were upset. But not by these people but who are there to was, help. This, yes, but what they saw was a chance to get their message out. And they really believe that they're being preyed upon. They're being hunted. And it was an opportunity for them to get a national audience to see that they're scared and they need help. And I respect that. Which is what the Democrats were doing. Okay. Listen, I'm so, happy to go after it and call things out where I don't like it. That's okay. what my show is all about. But, you Final know, question. they need protection. Okay. So, the two th 
three-fourths of the squad came out for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yes. What? Yes. Yes, they did. I just, okay. I laugh at that because I don't know how that squad thing actually happened. Like, I don't, I don't know why we're calling a bunch of freshmen uh, some kind of entity of influence in a system they just got into. Because they do have a lot of influence. They have they, a lot of they, social media influence. Right, they well, have political cachet. The media loves to talk okay. about them. But I think you have to put points on the board if you're going to earn your office. Get things done for your constituents, not just for your own profile. Is, okay. My question was... Louis! I love you. <laughs> Imagine if that were his name. <laughs> that was so Italian of you. <laughs> I, know. I take no offense. No, you shouldn't. But is that uh, the squad coming out for Bernie? First thing I thought was, that's good for Elizabeth Warren. Because? Because it makes him to the left of her, and she needs to move to the middle. And what always happens, it's not unusual in politics, you know this, I'm sure all of you do also, is that primary takes you to a poll uh, a polar position within your party, and then you try right. to fight your way back to the center. I think what's going on with the Democratic Party is a little bit more extreme uh, than we've seen in the past. We had a poll not too long ago that said if the person running against this president identifies as socialist or can be identified reasonably as socialist, right. they lose by six points. So I think labels matter in politics. They do. I think uh, the Senator Sanders has a tough time in defining socialist as a good thing to a capitalist society um, that doesn't like the idea of that kind of distrib distribution of assets in general. Even in his own party, I don't think it really goes. I think they got a tough task. Chris Cuomo, thank you very much. You. Appreciate you flying out here.